In December 2021, the Government published the final version of the 2022 revision to the Building Regulations Part L. In this video, I'll take you through all the key points in the final document. You may have seen our previous videos about the draft version of this update. This video replaces these previous updates. First, let's remind ourselves of the drivers for change for the new Part L. In 2019, the United Kingdom became the first major economy to pass net zero carbon emission targets into law. The aim is to bring all UK emissions to net zero carbon by 2050. The Future Home Standards, or FHS, is part of the government's response to hit the target with the FHS due to be in place by 2025. That standard will mean homes will no longer be reliant on fossil fuels for heating and hot water and should produce significantly less CO2 emissions. This 2022 Part L revision will be a stepping stone towards this proposed future home standards. And it's a significant step up from the current 2013 edition of the Building Regulations Part L. The 2022 changes to Part L will affect all building work in England, including new builds, extensions, alterations and changes of use. Volume 1 covers dwellings and Volume 2 is for buildings other than dwellings. The SAP and SBEM Energy Assessment Calculation tools will also be revised. CO2 emission targets will be retained, but approximately a 30% improvement will be required. Fabric energy efficiency targets will also be retained, but only for dwellings. There will be a new maximum permitted primary energy use, and this is a new standard introduced within the SAP and SBEM calculation tools for all new buildings. There's also an uplift in fabric insulation standards and efficiency standards for heating, hot water and ventilation systems included for all building types. The 2022 revision will place greater focus on the as-built construction to reduce the gap between the design performance and the as-built performance. All new dwellings will require air permeability testing. Sample testing on larger developments will no longer be permitted. Drawings will need to be reviewed by the designer and the installer. And an on-site audit of building details and thermal elements will be required both during construction and at completion for the building regulation approval. This new Part L will come into effect on the 15th of June 2022 and there will be transitional provisions, which we'll look at later. First, let's look at Volume 1 for dwellings. The 2022 Part L Volume 1 improves the minimum performance standards for new build homes. These are on screen now. These standards are backstop U values and must not be exceeded for new build dwellings. However, if one element only hits this minimum value, then it is expected you offset this by improving the other elements. These are the suggested U values for new build houses. You may require triple glazed windows, but Increasing PV by a small amount could help you avoid triple glazing. The Partel update also affects domestic extensions. New thermal elements to extensions should not exceed the U values on screen now. Gas boilers will make a SAP assessment harder to pass for all home types. Heat pump boilers will be the most favourable heating systems available for new build dwellings. Electric panel heaters will make it hard to get a pass, except in small apartments and very well insulated homes with PV. Photovoltaics, or PV, are likely to be required on all new build schemes which use gas. LED lighting can help make improvements and help to get a pass. Wastewater heat recovery systems will help pass a SAP assessment. In these systems, wastewater from baths and showers pass through a heat exchange. 
The residual energy from this wastewater will preheat the incoming water supply, reducing the energy required to bring that water up to temperature. Low temperature heating should be specified for all new dwellings. With low temperature heating, the supplied temperature to the central heating lies between 45 and 55 degrees C instead of between 75 and 85 degrees C as with traditional heating systems. Consequently, the efficiency of the radiator is significantly improved. This works really well with heat pump boilers and district heating systems. For low temperature heating, low temperature or oversized radiators or underfloor heating systems are required. Not using low temperature heating will make the SAF assessment more difficult to pass. We're going to put some typical examples on screen now. There's a bit of detail in each, so hit pause to read the full description of features and the U values for each unit. First, this is an example of a dwelling house with gas central heating. This is a dwelling house with an air source heat pump heating system. This is a small apartment. And this is an example for larger apartments. Remember, these are all just examples. There will always be the ability to trade off one renewable system for another, but it's very unlikely you'll be able to achieve a pass without using some form of renewable system. At completion of the work, the Building Regulations Part L, or the BREL, report and photographic evidence should be provided. The as-built report should include construction specification and detail any changes made since the design stage. This allows builder control to review changes and spot any possible fudges. The as-built report should be signed by the SAP assessor and the builder or developer to confirm the dwelling has been constructed according to the specification. This increases the accountability and liability of the people involved. The on-site audit is a photographic log of each dwelling that should be provided to the SAP assessor and builder control at completion of the work. It should provide photographs of the main details with examples contained within Appendix B of Approved Document Part L, Volume 1. These include the floor to wall junctions, the wall to ceiling junctions, door thresholds, below the damp proof course level lintel and steel beam penetrations, around roof and ceiling joists, junctions with the ceiling and the gable walls, the windows and the wall junctions. These photographs should be digital, geolocated, and each image should be referenced using the methodology in section eight of Appendix B. The 2022 revision is introducing better guidance for continuity of insulation. Gaps that create heat loss and thermal bypass should be avoided. Drawings should identify continuous layers of insulation and these should be reviewed to ensure they are buildable and robust. Perimeter insulation should be provided and any wall insulation should extend below damp proof course level. The windows and doors should be positioned with a 30 to 50 mm overlap between the window or door and the insulation layer. And insulation boards between rafters should be edged with a compressible tape. The on-site audit should also include photographs of these features. Volume 2 of the new Part L relates to buildings other than dwellings. Some of the main changes in this volume include the SBEM is required to pass both the CO2 emission target and a new primary energy use target, so improvements are likely to be required for both U values and thermal bridging. Thermal bridging should also be addressed at the design stage. 
and accredited construction details will no longer be acceptable for use within the SBEM calculation. Instead, each detail should be independently assessed, but the assessment can be reused where the detail is the same. Builders should confirm that an appropriate system of site inspection is in place to give confidence that these details have been installed on site. And the SBEM BREL as built report should be signed by the developer to confirm construction has been completed according to the specification in the final report. Maximum permitted U values for new build non dwellings are on screen now. These are very similar to the current standards. The U values will be dependent upon the use of the building and the heating systems installed. The values are the same for new thermal elements in non-domestic extensions. Consequential improvements might also be necessary. Primarily, these occur when extending buildings with an existing floor area that is greater than 1,000 meters squared, and also when installing new HVAC systems for the first time or increasing the capacity of any existing HVAC systems within the building. Improvements may be required if they are technically, functionally and economically feasible, with a minimum of 10% of the value of the principal works to be spent as a consequential improvement. These can, however, include work that's already planned or proposed for the scheme. Possible improvements are listed within Appendix D of Approved Document L, Volume 2. As always, transitional provisions are in place for the new approved documents. To use the old 2013 edition of Part L, an application must be received before the 15th of June 2022 and work must have started on site before the 15th of June 2023. For multiple dwellings or buildings on an application, work on each unit must have commenced for the transitional provisions to apply. So, for an application of 100 dwellings, work on all 100 units must have commenced before 15th of June 2023. If 10 dwellings have started, only these can be built to the 2013 standards. The remainder must meet the new 2022 standards. Foundations for blocks of flats are considered a start on all units within that block. As I said at the beginning, this video replaces any of our previous Partel updates. If you found the information helpful, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to hear when we release future building regulation update videos, remember to click the notification bell too. As always, each project is individual, so if you're unsure about anything, give us a call on the number on screen now. Thank you again.